Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you, um, well, just some highlight games between or on my channel. Um, a little bit of an update, my family is not feeling all too well and I've been taking care of them for the past few days. That's the reason why um, I'm trying to, uh, well, this game would normally be cast on a Monday and Wednesday, Friday, but instead it is going to be Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, th Friday. We'll see how everything goes. Anyways, this is going to be a game between Tho and Colorful. This game was taken from WC Replays Wars. Um, the normal replay site that I normally get all of my replays from was not working today. Hopefully that will come back up as it does have a lot of very, very high con quality, high, high, high quality videos coming in there pretty regularly. Now, we are going to have a human versus night elf matchup, colorful versus Tho here on Turtle Rock. As we see, the Archmage now just leaving behind that last sea turtle hatchling for the militia to take out as it's going to move along its merry way. Meanwhile, we can see a demon hunter doing a little bit of its, its own creeping. And interestingly enough, a very, very interesting creep pattern where it's going after the ogre warrior using Wisp to try and block it. And that is not normally the strategy. Normally the Ancient of War is brought over, but the Ancient of War this time around is actually training up more units. I do like this style of strategy a little bit more. It does give a little bit more, um, more options for Colorful as he is able to set up and set up that Ancient of War to train up more units rather than trying to have it tank damage. Coming back around though, we can see that Tho is doing a good job using this map's advantage for human players, the easy, easy expansions, as he is now going to be militia clearing out this starting location. Now, in addition to getting to almost a level 3, he should get some very, very nice items. And the nice item this time being a Boots of Quel'Thalas. Not going to be that beneficial. He may end up selling it as there is not any agility heroes for the human race. Coming back and taking a look at the Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter now wandering around the map, perhaps going to try and take down this Goblin Merchant Shop and picking up that all-important Watcher Ward there that gives a lot of scouting information. Now, you can see that the Archmage is getting very close to level 3 and will be able to do so right about now. There you have it, pretty much on the money there as the Demon Hunter picks up Boots of Speed and that means that the Archmage is not going to be able to do so. That is a huge, huge difference as the Archmage is going to quickly sell some items and then Shadow Meld right here. Are we going to see him? No, though also picking up the Dust of Appearance using that as a little bit of a deterrent as the Demon Hunter now looking for perhaps what is going down. Demon Hunter and a Footman. The Footman now looking to run away, running for his dear life, will end up getting taken out as that fo um, the Footman is just far too slow from that Demon Hunter. Now, strategically speaking, Tho is in a situation where he needs to hold on to this expansion. He's in a fairly good spot right now. As you see, the Water Elemental did end up falling to timed life. That was actually a very, very smart call. Colorful wants to get that Archer and does so. A little bit lucky right there as the Archmage does not do that much damage. 27 life um, factor in the armor there. And that Archer could have easily, easily survived that attack based on the random number generator. Mantle of Intelligence had a very big deal there to ensure that kill did go down as we are looking at where these archers are going to be traveling to next. Let's take a look. Demon Hunter now heading back home. Archers um, going to be bolstered by the addition of a panda. The panda and blue master, very, very effective against early footmen and against towers. The problem, though, is going to be those spell breakers. It will be quite some time before we see spell breakers as we have not yet teched to tier 2. This is the opportunity for Colorful to try and hit Tho when he doesn't have the right number of units. All he can really hope for is that the gold advantage really does pay off in the end. Unfortunately for Tho, there is no mercenaries on this map, so he cannot easily spend all of his additional gold without upgrading first and setting up the proper infrastructure. Meanwhile, you can see that Colorful is being aggressive on the other end, and he's doing a little bit of creeping. Colorful taking a lot of damage on this Ancient of War. I can't believe this Ancient of War could get taken out. No, it does not. Down to 44 hit points. And now you can see that the Footman with Defend is actually reflecting much of the damage back at those archers. Handful of units are all that are left here. You can see more Footmen are coming over as well. Archmage comes around 
and this is going to be very painful. The Ancient of War taking f far too much damage will get taken out right there. An archer is lost as well as Tho finds his opponent just asleep at the wheel pretty much and this is going to be very very um, just poor play for him. Colorful actually benefiting from um, what getting that extra footman run inside his base. He now has level 3 on the Demon Hunter with the Water Elemental not too far behind for a level 2. Meanwhile, the Archmage with two Claws of Attack plus 9 and a Boots of Speed, a Mantle of Intelligence, a huge, huge damage bonus. 51 minimum damage from an Arch Archmage with that range attack. That damage does, does add up over time rather quickly. The question is, will that Archmage be able to deal enough damage to these units to cause them to run? All right, here you go. Tree of Life is ready to go. And now that Tree of Life is absorbing a bit of damage. A Ogre Warrior taking a lot of damage right now. That Ogre Warrior will be falling um, behind another handful of units there. You can see the Panda is now sitting at level 2. Demon Hunter now sitting at level 3. Very, very comfortable. And we have a game where we do not know who the clear-cut winner is as of yet. Economic advantage. Definitely belonging to Tho as he has the um, expansion. Tech advantage belonging to Colorful as he already has a level 2 Panda. And um, level 3 Demon Hunter. Scroll of Town Portal now heading, heading back. This Archmage will end up getting... St oh no, does not get teleported straight on. And that is a very big deal. Meanwhile, the Dryads um, are going to go ahead and abolish magic down those Water Elementals. And that is huge. Abolish magic onto a Water Elemental. And that Water Elemental is pretty much done for. As we now see Footman attempting to run back out as well. Alright, more Dryads coming in. Oh, Footman. Now with that defend, this is going to be a very big deal as the Dryads are now attempting to take down some of these units. You can see the Archers are doing a bit of piercing damage as well. The Footmen are pretty much damned if they do, damned if they don't, so to speak, trying to run away. You can see that the Demon Hunter does not have that Orb of Venom, which would really add in that additional bonus damage that I would normally be expecting at this point. Oh, that Dryad has to be careful if it oh gets turned around, if it throws another spear and it gets reflected. Um, that could be the end of this Dryad right there. That Dryad surviving with one hit point. Very, very lucky. As we now see the Demon Hunter still wandering around here. It looks like one archer attempting to take down this farm. An expansion coming in from Colorful. The gold mine is already being um, entangled. And this is looking good for Colorful as he will be soon, even economically speaking. Supply 45 over 54 for Tho. Meanwhile, Colorful sitting at... 41 over 50. No big surprise there. Who has the advantage? But Colorful should be able to do a very strong catch-up at a moment's notice. If the Demon Hunter decides to back off... Nope, not, Demon Hunter is not going to back off here. Perhaps on the final attack. If he does back off... No, the Panda is still going to get to level 3, I believe. Yes, level 3 on the Panda. Oh, this could be bad news. Water Elemental getting one Dryad very easily. The second dr Dryad still alive, though, as the Demon Hunter... Perhaps looking for that little bit of extra experience to give him that small advantage in the mid game. Archmage still seeing that plus 21 damage with a staff of teleportation. He is going to be a unit that you have to keep track of at any given point. He could just teleport in or teleport out of a big fight and save himself as we are now looking at a scroll of healing for that Archmage. All right, Mountain King sitting at, I believe, level 1. Um, low level 2 now. Level 2 Mountain King going up against the Ogre Lord Creep Camp here. Meanwhile, off over here, you can see that the archers are trying to get some easy damage onto the Priest and the Sorceress. And where is the rest of that army? Army now coming in right here. All right, Dryad, this is going to be an engagement here. And a very big one at that. Though pretty much caught completely out of position here. As another Breath of Fire does go down. Though losing a lot of footmen and a lot of units. As we now see... Um, colorful sitting very strong here he's gonna finish up this creep camp he got a lot of kills on the exist on the wave of units coming in from Tho, and now colorful has a huge advantage is that or i wouldn't say call it a huge a good advantage if he can translate and continue that advantage that would be perfect but also one thing to note no levels were gained off of this creep camp 
even though a lot of units were lost on the side of Tho, there was no level gain, and with no level gain, all you really are are gaining experience that doesn't help you nearly as much. Druid of the Claw, sitting at level 1 adept training, needs to get to level 2 for bears. I believe bear training has just now finished. Uh, nope, no, bear training has not even been started yet. There we are. There's that mastery training. We are still rather low on lumber, and I am curious as to what Colorful is going to be doing for that precious, precious lumber. Lumber, very important in the later stages of the game. You need it for those higher tier units, and without a lot of lumber, what can be done? Dryads, still wandering around. Let's take a look back over here. Um, bear training, master training nearly done as well as we are sitting on two bases to two. A slight gold advantage, what, 5,000 gold, 8,000 gold, 50, what, 57, 8,000, and 11,000 gold here. So about a 2,000 gold advantage, which translates to, what, like 200 seconds, which is about a three to four minute advantage. Um, what you expected to see as though is now just clearing up this creep camp here getting to level four on the mountain king and now a staff of teleportation coming in from tho as that one poor poor troll berserker will get taken down mountain king sitting at level four very very strong now as the dryads could have easily taken out a priest panda demon hunter attempting to clear out this creep camp panda sitting at level four needs a rejuvenation also, the panda is should not have been in that fight. It is not giving any additional experience to that panda. And the demon hunter was already maxed out on creep experience at exactly 1400. Dryad's now ready to go. Where are we going to be going to next? Panda is in position. Panda with plenty of mana. Meanwhile, off over here in the center, you can see that the Archmage has hit the level 5. Mountain King has hit the level 4 and also has Unholy Aura. This could be a potentially big play as we see the Spellbreakers taking a little bit of da slow damage here once more. Alright, Spellbreakers taking a lot of damage. Dryad taking a shelling and may end up taking a bit more damage than they chewed, um, chewed off there as we can now have all the Dryads looking to back up all right let's take a look at this all of those units are now looking to back off here bears are in position mountain king is right there in a sea of night elf but it is comfortably invisible making it very difficult to take down stormbolt onto a bear with only a staff of preservation coming in right behind it Sp uh, what the militia now being called in to try and put pressure onto this natural expansion here only Mun Moonwell, but Colorful does have a good amount of money in the bank. All right, peasants now funneling in from the north. What are we going to have? We're going to have a bit of a turnaround. There are creeps down over here, easy to awake, as a sorceress will get caught in mid-transit. That's exactly what um, Colorful wants to see. Colorful wants to see his, re his units and his resources stockpile up while he's able to easily take down his opponents. Um, just whimsical nature of bringing his units onto the battlefield with auto move. All right, Footman now running forward. You can see a drunken haze, breath of fire. More and more of these units are just falling, and Tho is just getting absolutely torn apart in this fight. There is a breath of fire. The bears are there to try and finish off a lot of those units. And oh, is he going to get any of those uh, riflemen? The lower hit point riflemen could get taken out here in just a moment. You can still see how much damage that normal damage is going to do. All right, the bears just tearing their way through all of these units. Demon Hunter still sitting at, what, 187 hit points and regenerating rather quickly with the help of rejuvenation. All right, bears doing their job now. Dryads taking a bit more damage than I would think they would have expected as the giant sea turtle gonna go ahead and start aggroing against the, some of the other units. Sorceress does go down. Demon Hunter sitting at level 5. Panda sitting at almost level 5 as a handful more creep camps will get cleared out, giving ever so closer to level 5 for that panda. If the DH hits 6, that is going to be Superman. So difficult to deal with. Chaos damage across the board for range, and it can do a lot of damage.
priests now making their way over. You can see scout towers are in position. Sorceress are here as well. Spellbreakers, all of them raring and ready to go for what may be a very important fight. We just need to take a look and figure out what's going to be happening here. So bringing in more and more units to reinforce this expansion location, but Colorful already brought over and now with a handful of Dryads should be able to easily take down this Scout Tower. That Scout Tower looked like it was about to get fall and get canceled, but no. So kept the guard, guard Tower at work and now that Guard Tower should be able to upgrade at a moment's notice. All right, let's take a look at the Scout Tower taking a bit too much damage. There's the cancellation on the expansion as the Bears, Demon Hunters just rolling through this um, location. And once more, Colorful really making Tho seem a bit noobish. He has been winning every single one of these early battles. There are a lot of Bears and without any, um, without any Griffins to really challenge the Bears, those Bears are are pretty much going unanswered at this point. Um, yes, you could have perhaps tried to go for um, um, like what, two hexes or other ways to deal with these units, but there is no other way more convenient. Um, well, anyways, Panda now heading back off to north. Panda looking to push off to the north here again. Demon Hunter seen at level five, almost level six getting a bit stunned there and the demon hunter now goes to town onto some of the casters and the mortar teams mortar team taking a, a licking but keeps on ticking so far as we see um the spellbreaker is going to go after the spellbreaker it looks like it might no it is not as the bears are still trying to give chase here if the demon hunter can get six as the mountain king gets to level five as also there is a squirrel of town portal bringing the panda pandarin brewmaster back into play all right rejuvenations going around bears need to absorb a whole bunch of damage they are currently majority in the red and you cannot have red frontline units red frontline units do tend to just melt away very quickly as we now see another push coming in by tho Tho's timing on this push could not be more perfect. He knows that his opponent's probably cowering inside his base. And with mortar teams and that many mortar teams, the Dryads are going to be running um, running for the hills, so to speak, trying to get away with their, um, with their un- with their unarmored armor class. All right, Bears, Dryads now making their big bush throw forward. Here we go. There's a Drunken Haze. Are we going to see a Breath of Fire? Yes, we do. And easy, easy damage across the board. Colorful is in an okay situation as we now see the Metamorphosis come into play. Is the Metamorphosis going to perhaps take down even more um, units here as the Druid of the Claw forced the Scroll of Town Pour out just as it was running low on mana? Archmage still sitting at level 5, still has not made a play to level 6 as of yet. Uh, 76 over 78 supply compared to, uh, what is this, 68 over 70. So somehow, Colorful is still behind even though he is ahead in terms of overall supply. And what is going on here? Metamorphosis could easily, easily take down a lot of these units. And now, oh, are we going to turn around Breath of Fire? Yes, we are, as the Dryads are now coming in to engage. All right, Metamorphosis is in a bit of trouble. It is rather low on mana. Is he going to be able to stay, stay alive in it? I do not believe Metamorphosis works like... Um, works in a way that it always maintains all of your upgrades. Um, I would be surprised by that, but then again, um, I've seen a lot of things happen here. All right, Anti-Magic Shell on and Invulnerability Potion on the Mountain King. Mountain King tries to get away. Squirrel Town Portal on the Panda. Panda down to 63 hit points and is able to escape again. All right, Heroes back in action. Ready to go. Where are they going to be traveling to next? They're draining all of these moon wells. They need it for their, um, they need it for the next fight. And we're going to be looking whether colorful.
can really muster off, up enough strength to beat Tho. Tho has been in dominant control of this game in, in terms of e economically speaking. But we have seen glimpses of Colorful being the Colorful of old with some brilliant, brilliant decision making. Now, is that decision making going to translate here? Let's, we'll have to watch and find out as the Archmage is seen at level 5 and hoping to get to level 6 and quickly spots this additional expansion by Colorful on the top right side of the map. All right, there it goes. It is taking down a couple of priests now are all that is left here. They're going to get taken out. Um, or sorry, a lot of wisp and priests are all that is left there. Meanwhile, you can see the goblin tinker is just on patrol. There is a whole bunch of bears here and dryads. The bears perhaps just collecting mana at this point as they regenerate more mana in druid form. More bears coming together here. You can see good amount of bears waiting to f get into an engagement and i believe an engagement is going to be underway there is a flare as the mountain king now being brought over a player's forces are under all right coming back around you can see that the tree of eternity the main gold mines have already been mined out so the tree of eternity is trying to reposition itself in a way where it can perhaps um what is that gold mine gone already it looks like this gold mine is gone. Wow, is that mean? Yes, only three minutes, uh, three minutes, 30 seconds left on that gold mine here. As the demon hunter now looking to finish up the rest of the um, rest of what we see. Scroll town portal panda now needs to teleport out. Is he going to get past the masses? It looks like he was exactly able to do that. Uh, looks like he was able to do exactly that. Metamorphosis nearing completion. Expansion or a, a expansion army now coming their way. Spellbreakers, priests, a sorceress, demolishers—all that you really need. Not not demolishers. What am I thinking? You know what I'm talking about. The other mortar team. Let's take a look. We are going to be seeing the tree of life now taken out, and with that, an if another tree of life exists, it will be spotted on the map. So now with mass teleport able to move around the map extremely quickly and now going after Colorful's Ancient of Lores. 70 over 70 supply already gone, um, or sorry, food supply already blocked. Colorful unable to train up more units as a second Ancient of Lore could get taken down here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going to happen. This is a very good spot for Tho to fight. Staff of Teleportation to, in order to get away and yes, will be able to do exactly that, teleporting back to the center portion of the map. All right. Mountain King, Spellbreakers, Mortar Teams, all here, ready to go. Mountain King making its way over, going to be able to perhaps catch sight of this. Mountain King is sitting at level 5, and does Colorful know exactly where that Mountain King is? I would not believe so. He is invisible. It is very difficult to spot invisible units in StarCraft 2, just because of how, how rare they are. Now, if the Mountain King comes in here, he is going to find a pretty empty base with nothing to show for it. He's not going to be able to take out any Wisp, as we now see the Spellbreakers and the Mortar Teams attempting to take down the Tree of Eternity. Tree of Eternity already down to 858 hit points and falling rather rapidly. 438 as Mana Flare does go down. All right, Staff of Teleportation to get everyone back home. Teleports everyone back home. And this War of Attrition is definitely going in favor of Tho as Tho has been cool and um, cool and calm throughout most of this. All right, Archmage now looking to engage here. You can see that the Archmage, oh, beautifully done. Um, Mountain King comes in with the Stormbolt though end up killing colorful's demon hunter and really that may have been the difference there a uh, rather close score but the units killed though uh 
producing a little bit less units, but produce more buildings and raise more buildings. Um, very, very nicely done. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game one.